Good afternoon. Welcome to Madison Avenue Presbyterian Church and our 19th annual Carol Sing. Before we begin, a few items of housekeeping. Uh, the perennial announcement is to be sure that you have your cell phones or and electronic devices switched entirely off or on vibrate uh, so that we don't have any extra noises coming from uh, this side of the room apart from your wonderful singing. Uh, a few other things, if you're not a member of the um, mailing list for our concert series, you can sign up at the back and do that after the carol sing performance. Uh, the children's chorus has recorded two wonderful uh, CDs, released commercially, Simple Gifts, and for the season, Christmas in New York. If you don't have one of those and you still play CDs, we encourage you uh, to get those at the back in the vestibule. Also, uh, if you have a device in your home that you can talk to to play music for you, you can ask it to play Christmas with the New York City Children's Chorus, and you will get various things uh, from that. When I created the first carol sing uh, 18 years ago, one of the main things I wanted to do was to encourage all of you to sing. And no doubt many of you are here to hear some wonderful choral music to be sung by the people here in the chancel or upstairs in the balcony or in the front rows. And of course, I'm sure that you will enjoy that wonderful music. However, I would also like to hear you sing as well. And so at this point, I wonder if you could see where you find the nearest hymnal, either in the pew rack in front of you or it could be in the pew next to you. Uh, many of the carols are in that blue Presbyterian hymnal or in the order of the concert. And so I do look forward to hearing you uh, singing along with us and hearing you. So without further ado, let's now sing, O Come All Ye Faithful. Why don't we all stand and sing together?
So now is come our joyful feast. Let everyone be jolly. Each room with ivy leaves is dressed, and every post with holly. Though some churls at our mirth repine, round your foreheads garlands twine, drown sorrow in a cup of wine, and let us all be merry. Now every lad is wondrous trim, and no man minds his labor. Our lasses have provided them a bagpipe and a tabor. Young men and maids and girls and boys give life to one another's joys. And you anon shall by their noise perceive that they are merry. Hark how the wags abroad do call each other forth to rambling. Anon you'll see them in the halls for nuts and apples scrambling. Hark, how the roofs with laughter sound. Anon they'll think the horse goes round, for they the cellar's depths have found, and there they will be merry. Then wherefore in these merry days shall we, I pray, be duller? No, let us sing some roundelays to make our mirth the fuller. And whilst we thus inspired sing, let all the streets with echoes ring, woods and hills and everything bear witness we are merry. <laughs>
hanging on beside you as the Crosstown bus lurches its laden way between the wintered hills of Central Park. My sidelong glance snags on a prospect never caught before, glimpsing within your early teenage profile the full maturity of middle age, the aspect you will one day wear, one day wear as mother, one who bears the future on firm shoulders. But see now what the eyes betray in that slightest hint of drawing down toward the edge, as though a weariness lies behind, buried, waiting to be born. My own well-worn paternal eyes seek momentary refuge, only to be captured upon opening by the clear, unclouded sunrise of your smile. Thanking the great provider of such moments over 13 years of grace, I leave the crowded bus, lead you dashing across Madison into elegant St. James to meet under the advent wreath a harpsichord and string ensemble, rehearsing with the soloists tomorrow's version of Messiah. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. And through a sudden storm of tears, I grasp the wounding, mending holly branch, claiming the spiral mystery of word made flesh and secret lodge within the solemn turning of the years.
A star rose in the sky, and glory from on high did fill the night with splendor. Came birds with joyful voice to carol and rejoice songs so sweet and tender. The eagle then did rise, went flying through the skies to tell the wondrous story, sang Jesus, born is he. From sin we are set free. He brings us joy and glory. The sparrow with delight said, this is Christmas night, our happiness revealing. The sky with praises rang as Finch and Robin sang, oh, what a happy feeling. The lark upon the wing said, now it seems like spring, no more is winter pressing. For now a flower is born whose fragrance on this morn to earth brings heaven's blessing. <coughs> the partridge then confessed, I want to build my nest beneath that very gable where I may see the child and watch whene'er he smiles with Mary in that stable. i 
the shepherds sing, and shall I silent be? My God, no hymn for thee? My soul's a shepherd too, a flock it feeds, of thoughts and words and deeds. The pasture is thy word, the streams thy grace, enriching all the place. Shepherd and flock shall sing, in all my powers, outsing the daylight hours. Then will we chide the sun for letting night take up his place and right. We sing one common Lord, wherefore he should himself the candle hold. I will go searching till I find a sun shall stay, till we have done a willing shiner that shall shine as gladly as frost-nipped suns look sadly. Then we sing and shine all our own day and one another pay. His beams shall cheer my breast and both shall twine till even his beams sing and my music shine.
as brisk as bees, if not altogether as light as fairies, did the four Pickwickians assemble on the morning of the 22nd day of December. They all repaired to a large kitchen in which the family were by this time assembled, according to the annual tradition, on Christmas Eve, observed by old Wardle's forefathers from time immemorial. From the center of the ceiling of this kitchen, old Wardle had just suspended with his own hands a huge branch of mistletoe. And this same branch of mistletoe instantaneously gave rise to a scene of general and most delightful struggling and confusion, in the midst of which Mr. Pickwick, with a gallantry that would have done honor to a descendant of Lady Tollenglower herself, took the old lady by the hand, led her beneath the mystic branch, and saluted her in all courtesy and decorum. The old lady submitted to this piece of practical politeness with all the dignity which befitted so important and serious a solemnity. It was a pleasant thing to see Mr. Pickwick in the center of the group, now pulled this way and then that, and first kissed on the chin and then on the nose and then on the spectacles, and to hear the peals of laughter which were raised on every side. When they all tired, they sat down by the huge fire of blazing logs to a substantial supper and a mighty bowl of wassail, in which the hot apples were hissing and bubbling with a rich look and with a jolly sound that were perfectly irresistible. This, said Mr. Pickwick, looking round him, this is indeed comfort. Our invariable custom, replied Mr. Wardle, everyone sits down with us on Christmas Eve, as you see them now, servants and all, and here we wait until the clock strikes 12 to usher Christmas in and beguile the time with forfeits and old stories. Trundle, my boy, rake up the fire. The deep red blaze sent forth a rich glow that penetrated into the furthest corner of the room and cast a cheerful tint on every face. Come, said Wardle, a song, a Christmas song. Bravo, said Mr. Pickwick. Thus saying, the merry old gentleman, in a good, round, sturdy voice, commenced without much ado. I care not for spring on his fickle wing. Let the blossoms and buds be born. Let the summer sun to his bright home run. He shall never be sought by me. But my song I troll out for Christmas stout, the hearty, the true, and the bold. A bumper I drain with might and main. Give three cheers for this Christmas old. We'll usher him in with a merry din that shall gladden his joyous heart, and will keep him up while there's bite or sup, and in fellowship good will part. Then again I sing till the roof doth ring, and it echoes from wall to wall. To the stout old wight, fair welcome tonight, as the kings of seasons all. This song was tumultuously applauded. Again was the fire replenished. And again went the wassail round.
I sat at my windy one evening, the letterman brought upon to me a little gilt-edged edged invitation saying, Kahuli, come over for tea. Sure, I knew that the hooligans sent it, so I went just for old friendship's sake. And the first thing they gave me to tackle was a piece of Miss Hooligan's cake. There was plums and prunes and cherries, and citron and raisins, and cinnamon too. There was nutmeg, cloves, and berries, and the crust, it was nailed on with glue. There was caraway seeds in abundance, sure twould bring up a fine stomach ache. Twould kill a man twice after eating a slice of Miss Hooligan's Christmas cake. Miss Mulligan wanted to taste it, but really there wasn't no use. They worked at it over an hour, and they couldn't get none of it loose. Till Hooligan went for the hatchet, and Killy came in with a saw. That cake was enough by the powers to paralyze any man's jaw. Miss Hooligan, proud as a peacock, kept smiling and blinking away till she fell over Finnegan's brogans and spilled a whole brewing of tay. Oh, Gahooly, she cried, you're not eating. Try a little bit more for my sake. No, Miss Hooligan, says I, but I'd like the restate of that cake. Maloney took, was took with the collie. McNulty complained of his head. McFadden lay down on the sofa and swore he wished he were dead. Miss Daly fell down in hysterics, and there she did wiggle and shake. While every man swore he was poisoned through iting Miss Hooligan's cake.
he did not wait till the world was ready, till men and nations were at peace. He came when the heavens were unsteady and prisoners cried out for release. He did not wait for the perfect time. He came when the need was deep and great. He dined with sinners in all their grime, turned water into wine. He did not wait till hearts were pure. In joy, he came to a tarnished world of sin and doubt. To a world like ours of anguish, shame, he came, and his light would not go out. He came to a world which did not mesh to heal its tangles, shield its scorn. In the mystery of the word made flesh, the maker of stars was born. We cannot wait till the world is sane, to raise our songs with joyful voice, for to share our grief, to touch our pain. He came with love. Rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice.